Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, so today I've got a Q&A for you. Um, it's the first Q&A that I've ever done, so you have to bear with me. I'm kind of making it up as I go along, but I'm pretty excited. Um, it, I think it's going to be fun. Uh, I'd like to do more Q&As as well, so if you want to see more Q&As, then leave the comments uh, or questions in the comments section of this video and I'll answer them in the next uh, Q&A video. I'd like to do them weekly if possible, um, so hopefully I get enough questions to kind of keep doing it, um, and we'll go from there. So while I'm answering these questions, just anything that pops into your head, anything you think about that you want answered, um, yeah, leave it in the comment section, and when I get enough questions, I'll make another video. Um, now, I'm gonna be reading off my iPad. Uh, I've just got the comments section open, um, and I'm reading through, but some of them are questions, some of them are comments. You have to bear with me while I kind of sift through things. Um, but yeah, we'll hopefully get through all of them. Uh, so the first question that I got here is from Gypsy Soul. Um, and they said, I apologize in advance, but just keen to get your point of view as a fellow Aussie. Um, and then they've got a, a list of questions here, uh, which I'll kind of like work through one by one. Uh, so the first question was, uh, do you plan to live in your van full-time? If so, where? Uh, the answer to that is probably full-time. Um, as for where, uh, I have no sort of plans at the moment to go anywhere particular. Um, I know I will move around, but um, yeah, I mean, for now, it's more about just getting a van um, than sort of where I'm going to go with it. Um, I would like... Uh, at some point to go to Tasmania, but that's just kind of like a long-term goal. Uh, the next question that they asked was, any difficulties legally? Um, now, I did make a video on this a while ago. If I can find it, I'll put a link to it. Um, but in answer to that question, yes and no. It's like, um, so technically, I, like, I don't know uh, the exact laws on living in a van or living in a vehicle, um, but I do know that uh, I've often been pulled up in the past for things like sleeping in a car or um, uh, sleeping. I even got woken up once for sleeping on a beach, uh, which I didn't realize was a problem at the time, but apparently it was. Um, so yeah, I think, I think there are laws against living in a vehicle or sleeping in a vehicle, uh, but at the same time, I don't think it's really high on the uh, priorities list for police to be like harassing people, um, especially if they're not causing problems. I think it comes down to how, how, much, um, uh, how much of a problem you cause by, by being in a vehicle. If no one knows you're there, which was the case when I lived in my van, then no one bothers you. Um, so yeah, it's kind of a gray area. Uh, next question. Any places you'd really love to go? I sort of answered that before. I'd really like to go to Tasmania in a van. Um, another place I'd really like to spend more time in is the US. I've been to the US before and done a, uh, like an RV like road trip um, and it was the, uh, one of the best things I've ever done in my life. So I'd like to do that again. Um, what else we got? Uh, pets, question mark. Oh no, I just skipped one. Uh, what do you, what do and don't you like about van life? Wow, that's kind of a that's a that's a broad question. Um, what do I and don't I like? Well, let's keep it simple. I like uh, the freedom and um, the fact that you have more control over your own uh, sort of life um, with regards to not having a mortgage, so not being kind of in that um, debt slavery, um, and also being able to move if you don't like where you are, things like that. So the freedom is probably the biggest thing. Um, what don't I like? It can be hard. Uh, I've, I made a video a little while ago. Um, it's, some, it's called something like what no one talks about or something like that. Um, and it's basically uh, the fact that being in a small space does make things more difficult. You don't have the conveniences of like modern societies. You can't just I don't know, even like washing your clothes and stuff becomes a bigger chore, things like that. Uh, the next question was pets, uh, question mark. I don't have any pets at the moment. Um, I, the reason I don't have any pets is because I don't want to be tied down in any way uh, at this point in my life. I'd love to have a dog. I've always wanted a dog, but 
um, yeah, I just the responsibility and the amount of time you have to invest in them uh, is what's kept me from doing that. But I certainly think you can do it. But if you're going to do it in a vehicle, uh, you you have to have the kind of lifestyle where you can be with that animal most of the time. You can't leave them in a van. It's not really fair. So maybe for like retired people or something like that, or someone who's got that like free kind of lifestyle where they're not going to work for eight hours or something like that. Uh, is your diet affected, e.g. better or worse? Um, my diet, not so much. I could say that most people's diet might be affected by living in a van because it is a bit more difficult to, to eat healthy. Uh, my diet doesn't get affected because I'm really strict with my diet, with what I eat. Um, for health reasons, I, uh, I eat a very clean diet and I don't really have an option not to. So, um, yeah, it just, it just takes more effort. Uh, relationships slash social life affected. Um, social life, not really. Uh, not at all, actually. Um, I don't find the social life gets affected. Relationships, uh, possibly. I'm single at the moment. Um, but I guess it means that if you wanted to have a relationship, you'd have to have one with someone that was open-minded that would be okay with the situation. Um, what are your views on heat, cold, refrigeration, hygiene, living in a van? Well, heat and cold are definitely a big issue. Uh, when it's hot, it's really hot in a van, and when it's cold, it's really cold in a van, so you do have to manage that. Again, I've got videos talking about things like this. Um, but yeah, there's ways you can kind of minimize the issues with heat and cold. Refrigeration, I would say, for me, is essential. I eat a lot of fresh food. Um, so yeah, definitely refrigeration. Hygiene, not such a problem, um, as long as you have access to like a shower and stuff, um, which, you know, is easy with uh, a gym membership. Um, yeah, and uh, what else we got? And ideas. Okay, so that was it from uh, Gypsy Soul. Uh, that was all from one person, by the way, so hopefully that hasn't chewed up too much time. Um, okay, so then Gregory Dunlop says, Hi, mate. My question would be the best and cheapest options for how to set up basic solar power system if you just need to run a fridge and power a few electronic items, nothing else. Um, we're talking about a minimalist approach here. Also, if you know uh, nothing about electricals, where's the best place to get help um, so that they don't rip you off? Cheers. Um, so for solar, the simplest way to do it is to have a solar panel, uh, a charger, uh, like a battery charger uh, with an inbuilt um, solar um, controller, like the SeaTech that I had in my last van and um, a battery and some fuses, obviously. That's the simplest setup. Um, and then you just have to figure out how many panels you need, how many batteries you need, depending on the power that you're using. Uh, but I had a 100 amp hour uh, battery and 145 watt um, solar panel, and that was good for me. Um, and then as far as uh, where to go to get help, it depends where you are, because I'm in Australia and I don't know where you are, but for me, uh, I, I know most of the stuff myself and I, I actually learn a lot of it on YouTube. So that's probably a good place to go for the knowledge. Um, but then like in Australia, there are places that you can go. I just find that whenever I go there, I know more than they do. So I would learn yourself before you go to speak to someone, especially if there's money involved. If you're buying a product, chances that they're gonna give you bad information are a lot higher. Um, okay, so next question is from Kathal1 and says, are you going to be dwelling urban or bush mostly? What's the reason you got into van dwelling? Uh, probably urban mostly, although I love going out bush. Um, I, you know, I don't have unlimited funds, so I would have to stay uh, urban just as far as um, long term, like making a living, things like that. If, I, if money wasn't an option, I'd probably spend a lot more time out in the bush. Um, and then what's the reason you got into van dwelling? Um, I don't know really, it's been a while since I came up with the idea. 
But uh, I think it was mostly the freedom aspect. I got sick of paying rent, basically. Um, and I didn't want to have a mortgage. And it was annoying me that I was paying someone else's mortgage. Um, and it was like, it felt like dead money. Uh, I know that's a cliche, but that's what it felt like. Um, okay, so the Aussie Sheila says, hey, here are my questions. What are your plans for travel? Uh, in brackets, how do you plan where to go? When do you decide uh, where you're going, etc.? cetera? Um, I don't really have travel plans. Uh, and then how do I plan where to go? It's just wherever I wanna go. I don't really plan things much. I'm not a planner. I just kind of do things as I want to. Um, will you ever settle down and stay in one place or do you see yourself doing that in the future? Uh, yeah, uh, I'm in one place at the moment and even if I had a van, I'd probably still be in this one place. Um, and then I might just travel from here and then come back to here. It's kind of, this is where I grew up. So um, I've got family here and stuff and friends and you know, I like traveling, but I probably find myself coming back here quite a bit. Um, what do you do for money on the road? Well, that's what I'm trying to sort out now. So the reason that I got rid of the old van was because I couldn't afford to keep um, doing it. I needed to figure out uh, my finances. So that's what I'm doing as far as I'm, I'm learning to make money online with things like YouTube. Um, and I'm hoping to get into more uh, photography and videography stuff. Um, so I haven't figured that out yet, but when I do, I'll let you guys know. Um, okay, the next question is from 87XFUTE. I don't know how to pronounce that, sorry, but um, they've said, hey mate, uh, if you went with the Express, would you consider the 4x4 um, so you can have access to more areas? Uh, I'd rather go with an Iveco daily over a Mercedes any day, but that's just the mechanic coming out in me. See ya, Rob. Um, Okay, so yes, I have considered the 4x4, more so in the past. Uh, the Expresses um, basically come in a 4x4 version, not the long wheelbase though, I don't think it's only a short wheelbase. Uh, I actually know someone who's got a 4x4 Express, and um, yeah, I think they're a cool idea. Uh, long term, I want a bigger van anyway, so I wouldn't be too fussed with it, but if there was one for the right price, I might, I might own one for a little bit. Um, okay, next question. Next question comes from Mitchell Atwood, who's actually a good friend of mine. Um, so, hey Mitch. Uh, after living in the high ace for a bit, realistically moving forward, could you live in a van uh, that size long term or would you need something bigger? Uh, it's a good question because um, I sort of answered it already in the previous questions, but it's something that is really important to me and is part of the reason why I got rid of the last van. Uh, the answer is no, I couldn't realistically see myself uh, living in a small van like that long term. Um, I'd really like to be getting into something more like the size of uh, like the Ford Transits or the Mercedes Sprinters like I've spoken about. Something with a high roof and a bit longer wheelbase um, because yeah long term for me I mean I'm like six foot four um, so it was pretty hard living in such a small space a lot of like bending over um, but yeah uh, next question from GF you may want to talk about if you regretted selling your previous van um, no I didn't regret it I don't tend to regret things like that uh, I miss it sometimes. I, like I wish I had a van now. Like I'd rather have that van than, than no van. And it was a really, it was a really good build. Um, but I needed to get rid of it at the time, and I'm in a better place now for getting rid of it. So, and I'm working towards getting myself another one and getting into a better place. So no, I don't, I don't regret it. Um, next question is from. Uh, I don't know how to say this, but it's D I C L, uh, and they have said. Have you thought about a Patreon account with 3,000 subscribers? Uh, you might find people wanting to help get your van build up and running so sooner by helping with the funding. Uh, I, for one, would have no problems giving you something in return for the great videos you share. 
uh, just something to think about. Well, first of all, it's really nice to say, so thank you um, for your support. Um, and secondly, yeah, I have thought about it. Um, I was waiting until I felt like my channel was, was big enough, um, and I'm also waiting until I feel like the timing's right to, um, you know, where I'm, I'm providing enough value that I deserve to, um, to be supported. Because um, I think that's important. There's a lot of people online now that just start up a YouTube account and the first thing they do is ask for money. And uh, I don't think that's good, but I do think that with the way that media is going now, it's really important that we do support the people that we like watching. Um, because I think media, like online media, is taking over from television. I think that's pretty obvious to most people. Uh, and without, you know, the commercial support that TV has, um, it, it still takes a long time to make these videos. And there's a lot of effort uh, to build a channel. And I do think that people should be rewarded. Um, but I think that the, the sort of um, value structure has to be as such that um, you're worth the money you're asking for, I guess. Um, but I think I'm getting to the point now where the channel is getting to be big enough. And um, yeah, I, I, I am putting a lot of effort into the videos. So maybe soon uh, I will start a Patreon account. And um, yeah, I'd appreciate any support on that one. Uh, let me know what you guys think anyway on that one. Um, let me see, who else have we got? Okay, MC Briggs. Okay, this is a long one. Um, hi, I love your channel. Have you considered a step fan? Uh, and then I'll read the whole comment out and then I'll uh, answer. So they said, my husband and I are going to get um, a van and do a build out in the near future and have considered every option out there. We've decided that we will most likely get a step van I'm going to skim through this because this is a long comment. Uh, okay, so I don't actually know what a step van is. Um, maybe you could let me know in the comments section, MC Briggs, uh, what a step van is and maybe give me a link to one so I can have a look. Because um, I guess my answer to that is no, I haven't considered a step van. I've not actually heard of one before. Uh, but yeah, let me know and I'll, I'll have a look at it. Um, let's see, any more questions? Yes, so we've got Hobo Hacker says, okay, I uh, got a question for you. Dealing with odors, dirty laundry uh, would be at the top of my list. I hear people are going a couple of weeks before hitting the mat. Uh, I guess that means laundromat. Um, and how well do little porta potties do inside a hot van? Uh, never had experience with a porta potty, so I can't answer that one. Um, but as far as dirty laundry, um, I don't know. I, I'm not a particularly smelly person, so I don't really know how much of an issue that would be um, for everyone. But for me, that wasn't really a problem. I used to put it into, uh, I had like a pillowcase. I just filled it up with dirty clothes. And when it was full, I'd just go and wash them. And yeah, never really caused an issue. Um, next question is from the window cleaning dude. Uh, if not Sprinter, why not a VW Crafter? Uh, but the Transit is a nice van, was my working van some years ago. Um, yeah, I'd have no issue with a Crafter. I think the main reason that I tend to go for Transit or the Sprinter is whenever I buy a vehicle, I like to buy um, whatever vehicle is most common or most popular in the country that I'm in, which is Australia, uh, because it makes it a lot easier for getting parts and servicing and things like that because um, there's so many more of them around. There's not as many VW crafters, but uh, there's enough that I wouldn't be against getting one, for sure. And the Iveco daily. Um, currently looking at transits, though. Uh, would you consider, uh, this is from Blake Shepard, would you consider getting an X ambulance Mercedes Sprinter? I'm in Australia too, and there are a few around for under three and a half thousand dollars. High kilometers, but they seem to go forever. I'm considering getting one. I didn't realize they were that cheap, to be honest with you. Um, I haven't considered it in the past, um, but for that price, depending on the kilometers, I, you know, I might. Uh, I tend to prefer the sprinters with high roofs. Uh, if I was gonna get one, I'd really like to get a higher roof one, and the ambulances don't. 
but I think they're good. I've got, um, I've noticed some people that have them, um, not for camping in, but uh, for other things. And yeah, I think they're a good van. Uh, they wouldn't use them for ambulances if they weren't good, I don't think. They must be reliable. Um, let me see. Let's see if we've got any more questions. Okay, so we've got one here from Kieran Hillier. Um, have you looked into getting a Mitsubishi Delica? They are 4x4 and great off-road. Uh, similarly sized to the smaller vans, but you can go anywhere. Uh, yeah, I've looked at them in the past. I used to know a guy who uh, had a Delica and went around Australia in it. Um, I think they're a little bit smaller than the normal vans, though, from what I've seen. Um, and I want to go bigger. I want to get as big a van as I can afford, really. Um, so, yeah, I'm not sure. But I think they're a good vehicle. Um, okay. G-E-A-U-X Prius Cowboy uh, says... Ever see a Prius V chopped and placed a raised roof on it? Uh, stock they get 40 miles per gallon running AC and driving it like everybody else does. Uh, not the best miles per gallon, but uh, considering the size of the car, it is pretty good. Um, no, I haven't seen that in answer to the question. Um, I, I've never really looked into Prius myself, but I know they're pretty popular with some people. And the last question here is from One Awesome Inch, and they said, um, what has changed that you moved out of your van and now return to van life? Or now, yeah, now return to van life. Um, so what changed? I had to move out of my van because I needed to pay some uh, debts and I needed to sell the van in order to pay the debts. Um, and I was also just in a part of my life that was not very, um, I wasn't in a good place. Uh, so I needed to get myself um, into a better place and that's what I'm kind of doing. And I guess that's why now I'm looking to return to van life is because I've achieved what I wanted to achieve or at least partially in that time and I'm getting myself to a position where, um, where I could do it again and where I really want to do it again. Um, but I learned my lesson last time with the, um, the van that I had and the size that it was, and I want to try and um, get, uh, learn from those lessons. Um, that's something I like about doing things in life. It's like sometimes you often worry about um, issues that are going to arise, so you never actually do something in the first place. But the best thing you can do is to just go and do it and learn um, from mistakes along the way. And um, yeah, I guess that's what I did. Um, so anyway, that's it for the Q&A today. I don't know how long that ended up being, but it feels like it was quite long. Uh, again, if you wanna see more Q&As, I'd really like to do more. Uh, just leave your questions in the comments section below. And I'll hopefully, when I get enough, I'll answer them in the next uh, Q&A video. But yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Let me know what you think. Um, I'll see you guys next time. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you wanna see more stuff like it. Uh, if you wanna support the channel, then check out the instructions in the video description and I'll see you next time.